Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we're going to be talking about something that I do professionally and that is structural engineering. So what we all know is that Stormworks is quite adept for mechanical engineering, programming, electrical engineering even some parts, but does it really do structural engineering? I would say not really. And what I mean by that for those of you that are not familiar with both uh, what the different types of engineering is because of course maybe you've heard of civil engineering or you've heard of you know whatever but what i'm talking about specifically is the science of developing something so that it can withstand structural forces so i've been seeing a mod that's been out that's for submarines and that it crushes them when they go to a certain depth and there's people making survival videos and whatnot and I'm guessing part of that is after the unfortunate disaster with the submarine that was exploring the Titanic and part of it is just the natural curiosity that people have with sort of surviving accidents and disasters and whatnot so that's all good but what I was found int interesting with that is that when it talked about being crushed by forces that's a structural engineering aspect in a sense that you have a mini sub and now you're exerting forces on the top of it due to the depth of the water so the water pressure is building on the mini sub or on the submarine in some people's videos and you will end up crushing the hull and it'll get damaged physically it cannot withstand certain pressures in real life you can only go or design things you have to design them for a pressure so if you exert a, a pressure on the top of this mini sub it'll want to compress itself like a pop can potentially if it's not strong enough so that's a full structural thing now there is some mechanical aspect especially from the fluid dynamics portion uh, but it is a structural issue to withstand forces and pressure in that sense so i found that pretty intriguing that that was a mod and i got to thinking what would it look like if stormworks actually had structural forces and structural stresses within your creations now exactly what do i mean when i say that i'll explain so let's say you have something very tall and slender and then a part like this cantilevering out in real life, you'd ex you'd be able to extend this just as far as the cap capacity allows, and then it's going to fracture. It may break somewhere along here because it can no longer withstand the actual weight of this part sticking out and cantilevering this much. Now, if you add weight, that makes it that much worse. Now, what happens here if we add a ton of weight on the end of this not a metric ton but just a, a slang a ton a ton if we add a lot of weight on the end of this now i will actually just add weight blocks to this part itself just so we uh don't tip over because that's not what the demonstration is for but in theory this blue part should fail and it should experience failure probably somewhere here just looking at it because that's where the stress is going to be the highest. Now, you have to take an engineering course to understand how stress and strain works and stuff, but here we go. We are fully able to hold weight there, and that does not break. Now, you can push this to the limit, of course, because there are no structural internal forces in Stormworks. You can make this as big as you want. The worst, the worst case that's going to happen is that it's gonna fall over it's not gonna break yeah it'll, it'll never break there because this is one body instead it'll just uh, fall over potentially if we got rid of these black uh, weight blocks it would fall flat on its face there but it would not break or get damaged where we expect there to be a failure so how Stormworks can potentially implement that is what we're going to get into but before we talk about that we're going to talk about the forces and stresses that Stormworks already does have. So the first is mechanical capacity and what I mean by that is that these pistons you're looking at right in front of you here have a capacity they can only push or pull so much 
and all these pivots and mechanical joints have some sort of mechanical capacity so either they could lift the physical thing and in this case it's a container full of weight so either it's going to lift it or it's not going to lift it so in this case if we do something like this we're not able to lift and it's straining our system and it's in this case actually straining the rope so that'd be an interesting failure to have the rope actually fail or the wire but if we try to winch up this system it's not not going to lift it so it's kind of working now we're not failing at our actual joints and the reason we're not failing at our joints is because the rope itself is stretching but let's say we remove the rope in the example of this uh, container mover there are no uh, hoses or ropes or anything so it's purely mechanical and in this case it is struggling to lift it as you can see it's starting to twist and torsion it's not even coming straight anymore now the back of it's starting to lift up so that is a mechanical failure it's not able to physically lift this the capacity is not enough things start to twist out of shape take a look at that it's glitching i mean so that is what i'd call it's reached its mechanical capacity and it could physically not lift this up if we did have more weight on the back of this unit it would still not be able to lift it up because these little pivot arms and these little uh, sliders cannot raise the container so the game already has mechanical capacity as one of the factors the game also has impact forces which is related to both mechanical and structural engineering i deal with them in the case of a conveyor belt for example or something if if a material hits a conveyor belt also if you're designing a bridge and a truck of some sort accidentally hits the bridge column and you try to prevent failure so if we watch this suv fall here you're gonna see that is a impact and that tends to cause damage in this game if you run your boat into a wall that's an impact force that's a physical damage you get by impacting something so there's the damage and pretty much it doesn't affect all of it as you can see the front is damaged the back isn't but now it kind of goes crazy because some of our microcontrollers are damaged here but the point is that's an impact force and that's where we get to, to structural stresses and structural failure so imagine this is a bridge and you have a lot of weight coming right in the center of this bridge just like that how do you expect it to behave well you may see some deflection in the middle here it may start to bend downwards along the middle so that's one thing you may see and then if you get structural failure it'll collapse inward so that is a structural failure because this is unsupported so generally in real life what you do you actually add depth to these b members so in that case if you put two members or two parts i'm just going to show them in a different color if you put this and if you put this that would actually increase your capacity structurally and it would probably not fail or depending on the weight obviously that you're putting on it if you put a 10 tanks it's gonna fail but if you put just a car it won't fail so that's a structural failure or structural aspect of looking at things how does this structural failure look you you may ask kind of like this so the game already has the physics the gravity to recreate how this type of damage can work now whether we actually i don't believe that the developers could ever develop this because there's software that costs eighty thousand dollars a year that does analysis like this but this is for example a failure right down the middle of the bridge due to weight for example so what instead of this what the developers can do is to add a view just like we have up here views logic whatever they'd add a view that would show the stresses of this type of creation now what would happen if the stresses exceeds the maximum i imagine it would just cause the same kind of damage that you get if you drop a crane on your deck of your ship it's just going to cause the regular damage that we see but of course if they made things um and i know this has been a request a long-standing request of the game too if they make part like if if damage could actually cause these members to chip away and destroy and then all of a sudden it looks like this 
then these two bodies are no longer connected and it would fail right here. But I think to implement that is a ton of work. So what I'm saying that would work even just almost as good, not quite as good, but almost as good is like this example, say it, it's a high stress in the center here, the, you'd press a view and it would pretty much show something like this for you. So it'd be like, and it would be color coded. And honestly, it doesn't even need forces. Like I wouldn't even associate a, a stress force with it. You just color code it and say like, okay, that red bit is gonna get damaged if you spawn this. Or it could be orange and then all it needs is a tiny little bit of damage. Say you drive, say like it wouldn't break right away, but you drive a truck on it and it would crack. So all you'd have to do is have something like this in the game that shows this part is being read and you're like, wow, now I really need to support it. So what you can do, you can add a column right up beneath it. Boom. You've added a column just like that. And all of a sudden all your problems go away and it's probably not even going to be read anywhere. Additionally, if you didn't want to add a column, say you weren't able to add a column, like I said, you'd add either uh, down the sides or one depth in the middle like this. If you look under a bridge, anytime you're on a highway, look under a bridge, you'll see stuff like this. This would probably make this red go from red to presumably something like this or even this. So now you can put heavier vehicles on, maybe a tank would not even cause it to break, but two tanks would. So kind of, kind of uh, adding an extra feature and this would even come into play with a ship hull in really rough seas where you can have a ship actually break. If you watch the movie with uh, the ship breaking apart as it's coming into the harbor near Boston, back in the 50s or something, the uh, the ship welds actually fractured and the hull broke. So that you'd be able to do failures like that if a really big wave hit the ship, your ship could actually take damage just from the internal stresses, not even external stresses. So there's different types of structural stresses. This is one of them, and this is another. So in this case, you have a column with a heavy force on that column, and this column would buckle or otherwise fail from that weight. So it wouldn't be the same as what you saw for the bridge collapsing in half. This would actually have a different type of failure, but the game doesn't really have to differentiate that. They could just show one type of uh, damage just depending on how the force is applied. So whether it's a vertical force downward, such as this, or whether it's an, a force on a plane that we had in the horizontal direction. So this is a vertical, vertical like shaft or column, and another one was a bridge spanning across or horizontally. So they could apply different, um, like this would be actually stronger. You could put a lot of weight on a column, but a thin narrow beam running across with that same heavy weight, just like this, would actually fail earlier. So this guy with the same thickness of beam running across would actually fail first before this column fails. So they would be able to apply uh, the stresses or the capacity of the member or part based on how the uh, orientation is, whether it's vertical or horizontal. Now this is actually called FEM or finite element modeling in real life where you test internal stresses. We can go into crazy information and talk about all that stuff. I'll show you a screenshot how it looks. So here you have the different stresses and strains on this hull based on you know how it works. So th it would be a very simplified version of this but in essence, it would add an extra feature for you to talk about and think about instead of having unlimited uh, capacity structurally. So it would add the structural aspect to the game that's currently not in the game and potentially open up a whole new, both of first, a can of worms because now you'd actually have to design things to withstand forces, so that's new. And then it would also make you such that you can create strong creations to withstand hurricanes and actually get damaged by them opposed to just you know blow up and catch on fire whatever so always thought that was kind of interesting um and that's sort of my take on it as a structural engineer as someone who works on literally this every single day so i hope you guys enjoyed the video hopefully learned something 
make sure you comment any questions below and stay tuned for more. As always, happy storm mixing everyone.